Hello, hello. Welcome back to another video. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Josh, and I'm the MCAT tutor. A little birdie told me just today that you were having trouble memorizing MCAT formulas, and perhaps this might be you. All angry, frustrated, with a bunch of pent-up anger towards the exam, just because you can't memorize a couple formulas. Well, after watching this video, you're going to be like this. See the difference? <laughs> because as somebody who's gotten a 517 on the exam, who jumped from a 503 to a 517, I'm going to teach you the tips and tricks that I used to achieve that amazing score, particularly with a 131, which is the 99th percentile in chem phys. So you guys can trust my expertise because chem phys is the one section that uses a bunch of formulas. With that out of the way, let's start deconfusing MCAT formulas. The first tip that I have to give is that you need to use mnemonics to help you memorize formulas. Some formulas, they're going to be very tricky and there's just no other way around it but to memorize it. And that's kind of the downside of the MCAT because it's not really fun to memorize things. However, we can make memorization a fun process, and we can turn memorization into a process in which you'll be more easily able to remember certain formulas. For example, I have a couple of mnemonics. One of them for Ohm's Law is twinkle, twinkle, little star, V is equal to IR. See what I did there? By making it rhyme, we already know voltage is equal to IR. Another formula I know is related to capacitance, which I like to call the ice cream cone formula. And the formula is C is equal to Q over V. The reason why I call it the ice cream cone formula is because, well, it looks like an ice cream cone. The Q kind of looks like the nice ice cream scoop you get. And then the V looks like the cone. So I use that to help me remember a capacitance in that way. I also know another capacitance formula that I like to call caked such that Capacitance is equal to area times the dielectric constant over distance. You get caked, if that makes sense. It's little stuff like these that you need to apply. Funny tricks and funny sayings in order to memorize formulas on the MCAT. So that way, it becomes a way easier process. Use mnemonics to your advantage. Another thing I advocate for is to use spaced repetition. Sometimes for some formulas, there may not be a mnemonic around it. For example, for Coulomb's Law, I do not have a mnemonic that I can come up with off the top of my head. I, I just can't do it. Unless someone out there is willing to be creative enough to make a mnemonic, or I am, I would just have to strictly memorize it. But the way I would do it is I would use Anki, which is an application right here. For those of you who don't know what Anki is, it's an app that essentially is kind of like Quizlet, but it has an algorithm to which it incorporates space repetition based on if you can remember a certain card or not at the moment. It's super useful and it's very scientific in terms of that it uses spaced repetition in the most efficient way possible so that you can maximize your learning. It's a really fantastic app. There's some cards out there that are pre-made by users on Reddit such as Miles Down or Jack Sparrow. Those are the two big ones that I hear. However, you could feel free to make your own cards on Anki and I would actually suggest it because you can customize it to the formulas that you miss yourself and then quiz yourself on them. In using Anki, I would not quiz yourself just by saying the formula. Rather, I would get a whiteboard out and strictly write down the formula on the whiteboard and see if what you wrote on the whiteboard matches what's on the screen. And if it matches, you can go ahead and click and move on to the next card. If not, tell the application, hey, I need to review this again in like five minutes. So. Use active spaced repetition. That's going to help you memorize MCAT formulas. My way in terms of learning formulas is to simply practice, do practice problems. That's ultimately the best way you're going to learn formulas. By doing MCAT practice tests and MCAT practice passages, you will start to apply these formulas and you will start to remember them and simply get better at using them at the right time and knowing when to use them based on which variables are presented in the question stem. All of the previous tips I gave before about memorization, it, it doesn't matter if you can't apply the formula correctly. That is why I highly recommend 
you should take practice tests and do practice passages. And as someone who jumped from a 503 to a 517, that is my biggest advice. Do practice passages because you will only get better at the MCAT by doing the MCAT more often. And the MCAT is just a bunch of passages as well as a couple discretes. So you need to incorporate that in your studying. Because here's the thing, when you do practice passages, you get to learn how to be caught off guard. Because I'll tell you, when I took my 517 exam, there were some hard questions that did catch me off guard. You need to learn to be caught off guard by questions that you don't know how to answer right off the top of your head. And perhaps these questions may ask you formulas that you don't know right off the top of your head. You need to learn that skill of adaptability when it comes to the MCAT. You need to learn how to adapt to scenarios in which you may not feel entirely comfortable with, which means that you will have to learn how to deal with questions for formulas that you perhaps may not know. That is how you're gonna do well in the MCAT in terms of formulas. Another big tip that I would most definitely use is that you need to use units to your advantage. Units are everything on the MCAT. And if there's a problem that gives you units, it's essentially a freebie to some degree because chances are you're not gonna know every single formula that is on the MCAT. So you need to learn to use units to your advantage. For example, in this problem that they have posted up here, we're gonna use units. I'm gonna tell you guys right off the bat that I have no idea what the formula is to get the right answer, but because the units are there, I could simply use the railroad track method to cancel them out. So the problem reads as this. A piezoelectric crystal increases in temperature by 3 Kelvin during a 5-minute ultrasound examination. What is the power produced by the ultrasound probe in heating the crystal? And then it says the thermal capacity of the crystal is 200 joules over Kelvin. Well, in the first step, what we see is that we have 200 joules over Kelvin. And you guys may know that power is equal to work over time. Work, if you guys know the SI unit for work, it's joules. So we need to clearly identify that we need to look for joules over time. Luckily, the question gives us time, which is in minutes. When it comes to physics and chemistry, we usually want time in seconds. So we're gonna have to convert five minutes into seconds. And then what we're also gonna have to do is convert the thermal capacity which is 200 joules over Kelvin to chest joules. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 200 joules per Kelvin and multiply it by three Kelvin in order to get 600 joules because 200 times three is 600. And then we have to convert five minutes to seconds. So if we take five times 60, that's going to be 300 seconds. We're not done yet because the question is asking for power. Power is work over time. So what we need to do now is to take the 600 joules and divide it by 300 seconds. So much so that we're going to get a power of 2 watts at the very end. And we have just solved for our answer right here. The formula that would technically be used is Q is equal to C times T. But I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't think I've ever seen that formula in my life. And you don't have to because... The question stem has units that you guys can use to your advantage, so long as you know other formulas to help you out. You do have to know what power is, but that's fairly easy. And I hope that this example, it gives you a perspective of how you can use units to your advantage. Always use units to your advantage. My last tip here is that if you don't know a formula, you can always derive it. But that's the beauty of MCAT formulas, is that many of them can be derived from other formulas. For example, power is equal to work over time. Now, if we extend that further, work over time is equal to force times distance over time. Distance over time is equal to velocity. So therefore, we can also derive that power is equal to force times velocity rather than having to memorize two separate formulas. That's a very smart way to go about it. Another case in which we can do this is F is equal to QE. Chances are you might not know that off the top of your head. However, when you apply Coulomb's law, it'll make a lot of sense because force is equal to K, big Q, little q over R squared, whereas electric field, which is the E, is going to equal K, big Q over R squared. 
So you see that the difference between force and electric field is the fact that electric field is missing the little q. So that explains why E needs to be multiplied by little q in order to equal F. Because if you look at the more detailed formulas of the two in relation to Coulomb's law, it's very clear that electric field is different from force because electric field is missing one charge. So therefore we have to multiply it to make it equal to force. You can use Coulomb's law in many ways to help you out. It could also be used to help you derive potential energy as well as voltage. Use it to your advantage. But that about covers it for my formulas. And I hope that this video really helped you guys and that you'll be able to use these tips that I use to get a 131 in chem biz to help you excel at the MCAT and memorize and apply all the formulas you need in order to succeed on the exam. Chances are you're like this right now after seeing this video. And please be sure to like and to subscribe so that I can keep producing more awesome content in relation to the MCAT and giving more awesome tips. In the meantime, we'll see you later. <laughs> Bye.